Hello and welcome from NCHQ and this is the first of an annual update from across the service. Following up on the year of the Navy in 2017, 2018 has been another pretty big year for the Navy in which we've proved ourselves to be a strong and relevant Navy which is absolutely international by design. Not only have we managed to fulfil all of our standing tasks to this country, but we've also spread ships across the globe, both RN and RFA, and for the first time in four years we've been in the Indian Ocean Pacific. In the submarine environment we're reaching our 50th year of continuous at-sea deterrent and moreover we've put a submarine under the ice in the Arctic for the first time since 2011. With a fleet of new aircraft and flying trials well underway on the Queen Elizabeth, the fleet arm are also supporting operations across the globe. Our Royal Marines have also been operating widely from Norway to Brunei to Africa and our RM medics led the UN hospital effort in South Sudan. All of this has been supported through our reservists and our civil servants wherever we are. Of course, this has only been possible thanks to the continued commitment of all of you and your families. But enough from me. Let's hear from your shipmates and oppos throughout the fleet. This year, the Royal Navy says farewell to what has been a fantastic workhorse of the fleet air arm, the Sea King, which has retired after 49 years of operating in every theatre, delivering capability from land and sea, from the deserts of the Middle East to the South Atlantic and everywhere in between. As we salute the end of one aircraft, we welcome in a whole new era of capability. Wildcat and Merlin Mark II are already well established, but this year has seen the introduction of the first Merlin Mark IV jungly helicopter, and Crow's Nest is just around the corner. And of course, F-35B Lightning II, the first UK fifth generation aircraft has also joined the arsenal. The Naval Service is once again back in the business of operating fast jets from the decks of large aircraft carriers. HMS Queen Elizabeth and her air group, including Merlin Mark IIs and IVs, are at sea now, undertaking trials and bringing to life the new era of strike operations, and the first of many F-35B landings and takeoffs are underway. As new life is breathed into this excellent new capability. With many momentous achievements in 2017, and the year held as the year of the Navy, many would think that life would be much quieter in 2018, but nothing is further from the truth. The surface flotilla has continued to deliver excellent results alongside the rest of her fighting arms. New capabilities such as HMS Queen Elizabeth, HMS Magpie and OPV Batch 2 continue to evolve daily and enduring capabilities remain, such as MCM in the Gulf region and our stability presence in the South Atlantic and the global presence of Sutherland, Argyle, Albion and later on this year, Montrose all extending their presence and reach around the globe. New supply contracts are improving the availability of stores and equipment, but we are not there yet and still have some work to do in this area. Manpower plots are improving as the fragility on ships reduces despite churn of manpower. And all who have played a part in maintaining performance on operations should be proud of their efforts. Maritime reserves have been very busy during the past year, sending more people to sea, more people into live operations and more people out in support of exercises than ever before. In order to achieve this, we acknowledge your total dedication as reservists as well as those who support you, families, friends and employers, to whom we are extremely grateful. We've developed a plan, Future Reserves 20, to align ourselves as part-time professionals even more closely with our full-time colleagues. As we become more versatile, utilised and agile, we will take on more of their burden to allow them, Royal Navy and Royal Marines, to continue to operate worldwide. In 2019, we'll have exciting new career opportunities available to us, manning offshore patrol vessels, a clear example of the professional value we offer to the whole force. Many of you, no doubt, would have been disturbed by the rumours circulating late last year, which cast doubt on the long-term viability of the Royal Marines and the United Kingdom's amphibious capability. Nothing could be further from the truth. As telegraphed by the Defence Secretary in a recent speech, finally putting to bed the speculation and officially protecting HMS Albion and HMS Bulwark. The Corps currently has two head marks, fight tonight and developing for the future. Operations pay the bills and a crisis response could occur at any time and we must be honed, agile and ready. But we're also looking to the future and have seized the opportunity of the Defence Secretary's transformational agenda to develop the ideas of Littoral Strike and the Future Commando Force, both of which sit as key strands of the future Navy proposition. The Defence Secretary also recently announced a new Defence Arctic strategy. This will see the operationalism of the Royal Marines' presence in the region 
and delivers a powerful message of commitment and reassurance to regional partners and allies. These are indeed exciting times. The future commando force and literal strike narrative is landing and our evolutionary path is seeking to deliver fifth generation commandos supported by fifth generation naval capability. Although known as the silent service, we can talk about some of our achievements over the last year. The last year saw operational tempo increase significantly. HMS Trenchant made headlines when she participated in Joint Arctic Training Exercise ISEX 2018, breaking through the polar ice cap to give a visible demonstration of submarines' ability to fight in the most extreme conditions. Recognising the achievements of our personnel remains vitally important and the annual Submarine Oscars Awards provides an opportunity to do this in style. 500 submariners and their families attended the Glitzy event in Glasgow, with both serving submariners and those who support the submarine service applauded for their contribution. 2019 was the year of delivery for service as we realised the significant investment to prepare HM Naval Base Clyde as our permanent home. The base port change for HMS Talent and the arrival of HMS Audacious, the first of the Batch 2 Astute class submarines, is eagerly awaited. Early spring of next year will also see the handover of the next phase of single living accommodation at Clyde, which is already recognised as the best in defence. The new state-of-the-art escape and rescue facility will also open in the year. Finally, the 50th anniversary of Continuous at Sea Deterrent will also be marked in 2019. The longest ongoing operation ever delivered by the Ministry of Defence, CASD, will recognise the human achievement that has gone into maintaining the deterrent, a record which could not have been achieved without the courage, sacrifice and dedication of generations of submariners, their families and support staff. Versatile ships and diverse, flexible and skilled people are the cornerstones of the RFA. But while the future remains bright, we must not forget the tremendous efforts of our current ships and people who are delivering on operations daily. RFA Mounts Bay continues to protect our overseas territories in the Caribbean region as hurricane season hits. RFA Cardigan Bay continues her enduring support to the MCM effort in the Gulf region. And RFA Lime Bay has just completed playing an integral part in the exercise Safe Syria Amphibious Task Group. Looking ahead, the RFA's future is bright and secure with modern, capable Tiger class tankers entering service and the design of the 21st century solid support ships progressing fast. This will allow the RFA to provide comprehensive support to the carrier task group of the future, as well as traditional forward deployed commitments. It's an exciting time for the RFA as we deliver globally across defence. Throughout 2018, the civil servants across the Naval Service have continued in their vital role supporting defence outputs, protecting our national security through their roles supporting our military colleagues on operations and in delivering some of the largest and most complex equipment projects found anywhere in government. In recognition of the importance to the service of having a highly skilled workforce and in direct response to staff feedback from the 2017 People Survey, Navy Command has allocated funds to the two-star areas so that they and their line managers who understand the learning and development needs of their team members best can invest in them as appropriate. In addition, an injection of £100,000 has been made available for civilian personnel for postgraduate studies from next year. Me again. Any good warrant officer has to have the last word. As you can see, we're continuing demand around the globe and that's likely to continue for some years to come. But due to the commitment of you and your families and all of those who support us, I'm sure we'll continue to be a world-class Navy.